folks, this is Mike. Thanks for tuning in. Well, you know the situation. You've got that rusty metal fence and you know that you need to clean it and prep it and paint it to protect your investment. But what if you go through all that time and effort and expense and the rust comes right back through the paint? So how do you go about it? Well, I use a five-step process to paint rusty metals and I'm going to show you that today. I'm going to show you also the products, tools, and safety supplies you'll need to get the job done. So stay tuned and I'll show you how. Step one is to clean all of the metal that needs to be painted. Now you could use a household detergent here and a rag and clean it well and then remove the soap residue with a good rinse. But I love to pressure wash so that's what I did. And I'm using a turbo nozzle here but a 15 degree standard nozzle would work just as well. And this is going to knock off all of your loose paint, rust scale, as well as clean off the dirt. Okay, step two. Now before we apply the rust inhibitor, we want to remove as much excess rust as possible. And Clean Strip recommends using a wire brush. And you can use a handheld wire brush and lots of elbow grease. Or even better, you could use your power drill. Much more aggressive and faster. I have several different types of these brushes for tight areas and specialty applications and they are available at lumber yards, tool stores, and hardware stores, etc. I use the largest brush for about 80% of the fence. But for the little circle decorations at the top, I had to use a little more finesse and a couple of these smaller uh, specialty type brushes. On heavily pitted areas, I used my grinder. Not only did it remove the rust, but it gave me a nice smooth area to paint over. If you paint over the heavy rust, no matter how well you treat it in advance, that rough texture is going to show through your top coat. It may never rust, but it will definitely never be attractive. In step three, we're going to apply this clean strip rust controller to the rusty areas of the fence, which for me is pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> now, I think there's more confusion about this step than any other. I think most of us know how to paint, probably how to use a wire brush, how to clean. But this idea of rust conversion as opposed to rust elimination, I think is a new idea for many people. So I think it's important that we take a couple of extra minutes to explain how the product works, how to use it, and how to protect yourself from injury to boot. In addition to the clean strip, there are many, many other products on the market that do the exact same thing as this one. The important thing to look forward to is that the active ingredient will be either phosphoric acid or tannic acid. And they actually don't remove the rust. You really need to clean as much rust off to begin with because what they actually do is just convert the rust by a chemical reaction into an inert substance. In other words, it's really not rust anymore. It can be painted over and that rust will not come back. Also, it needs to be painted within 48 hours of application or new rust can start to form. You can apply the product with a rag, a paintbrush, or with a spray bottle, which is what we're going to do in this video. But whichever method you use, you really want to make sure you get plenty of acid and saturate the rust. And if you have deep, heavy rust, it may require more than one application. Or you may consider using a stronger, more concentrated version of phosphoric acid like navel jelly. I've already wire brushed the fence in step two. But I'm using a hand wire brush here to touch up some areas that still felt a little too rough. Now can you see what I'm doing wrong? I have on my gloves, but I forgot to put on my goggles. This is particularly important when using the spray bottle. I discovered my error the hard way when the wind shifted and I got some acid mist on my face. It will really get your attention really fast. There is a definite burning sensation. And not only that, a tiny bit got in my eye and it was uncomfortable for a few hours. If you do get the acid in your eye, be sure to flush it with water immediately. Fortunately, I only got a tiny bit on it and there were no lasting effects. So the bottom line is to be sure to wear your goggles. So after applying the acid, let it set overnight. Now you'll notice that the rust will turn a black color, but by the next day it should be gray, a sure sign that the converter's done its job. 
Now, however, the metal will still be sticky feeling and the gray areas may have a powdery texture and this powder should be removed before painting. The manufacturers recommend rinsing it first. Then you can use a little elbow grease with the paint thinner and a rag and that should remove the powder. And I did this on a couple of sections. It was quite time consuming. And what I finally did was, uh, instead of doing that, I used my pressure washer again, but I went to uh, a lower setting, like a number 15 or 25. And uh, just get a little bit closer, and that knocks off all of that towel. Then I let it sit a few hours in the Texas sun here, and I was able to paint it with the primer. And painting with the primer is step four. Now I use Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. Now according to their advertising, you can paint it right on rusty metal and it's supposed to prevent it from coming through. I've used this before with great success, but I have always cleaned as much rust as possible from the surface before painting. And I think you should too. I would rather overdo up front and not have to redo later. <laughs> It may work great directly painted on rust, but I can't bring myself to do it. So first we want to protect the surfaces that we don't want paint on. This is especially critical if you want to spray paint the primer. Now I'm using the brush method because I live on the Indy 500 here, and I don't want to risk getting overspray on other people's cars. And another reason is because I'm really not a very good spray painter. I used a combination of compact rollers and bristle brushes. And this worked fine for most of the fence. However, I used spray cans on the row of circle decorations across the top. These were very time consuming with the brush. I let the primer dry overnight and then I painted on the top coat, which is our final step. Again, I'm using a Rust-Oleum product. This is their gloss black oil based enamel. Now basically the painting procedure is exactly the same as applying the primer. Again I just use rollers and bristle brushes. The difference here is that I'm going to put on two coats of the top coat for extra protection. My hope is not to have to paint this fence again for 14 or 15 years. Now you may have noticed that I've avoided painting those floor-to-lee decorations up till now. Now these are plastic material and I'd simply just use a little black enamel spray paint on them. The spray pattern from the can is much less aggressive than my spray gun would have been, so I'm sure I didn't paint any passing cars. Well, at least no one's complained yet. Well, the top coating is our last and final step. Now, here's a picture of my fence. I put one coat on this so far, and I think it looks pretty good. And the question you have to ask yourself now is how many top coats do you want to put on? Now, I plan to put on two. Remember, I said I want my paint job to last 14 or 15 years. I've got my fingers crossed anyway. <laughs> now, one thing I might point out here is that this is a very time-consuming project, so don't be tempted to skip steps. You don't want to shortchange the success of your project, and you certainly don't want rust to come back through your paint. So folks, if you've enjoyed this video, please go below and like it. Uh, also, questions and comments are appreciated and welcome, and I will answer you personally. Also, we've got more videos coming. We've got um, woodworking, tool reviews, product reviews, DIY projects, so don't miss anything. Be sure to go below and click that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that bell. <laughs> so until next time, folks, thanks for watching.